My name is Taiwo Lawrence, and um, I reside in the United States at the moment. And um, I want to quickly share a um, um, few stories about um, how God has um, used me to reach out to people um, in the United States and where we stay in the United States. Um, when I got here, um, I knew, you know, leaving Nigeria, you know, the time I left Nigeria, I knew that um, the way um, I used to, in quotes, do um, um, external ministry will be different from the way I've done it in the past. I knew that um, the way I was doing it in Nigeria, precisely Ekiti, because at that time, last year, I was majorly reaching out to some folks in Ekiti. And um, I knew that coming here, I will have to um, follow the Lord and go through the um, process of um, the Lord leading me to people. You know, I knew it's not going to be the usual way of doing it. And But uh, when I got here, I didn't plan to start anything. I was just spending time to pray with my wife and with also a friend. And we were doing that consistently you know, we did from some months. I'm just giving background um, to how we started uh, reaching out to people. Uh, so, and um, pastor, you know, instructed all, all of us to start reaching out to people. And um, I and my wife, we obeyed. I obeyed. She obeyed. And um, I made it um, a duty for myself to reach out to people. And I started reaching out to people, though, it was not, it was not um, really what I was expecting. So I remember talking to pastor about it, that um, people don't open up here. You know, um, the blacks, even the blacks, they, you, when you talk to them, you remind them of how, you know, the, they were colonized, how they were treated and how people treat them, the white folks treat them. And I also knew because I had, when I talk to people, I had these people complain a lot about what I say and all of that. What I say, they don't hear and all of that. I had those things and I spoke to pastor. And pastor encouraged us to pray and we did. And um, I'm just running through the story. We started um, reaching out to people. I remember talking to someone who I met somewhere. And at first she didn't open up. She was just like... She's not ready, you know, like she, what she knows is that you have to open the Bible. She told me a story and um, I couldn't do anything for, for her. I couldn't do anything. I went back. I I remember that Pastor again spoke to us about that person because uh, I asked questions a lot. And I asked Pastor and Pastor responded, prayed as Pastor instructed. With the last time I met the woman, she was like, she was open and we spoke to her, we spoke to her about um, the gospel, you know, um, in the aspect of healing. And right there and there, she opened up someone who had issue about um, um, talking about scriptures, talking about the kingdom of God. You know, someone who had issue with it at first. She opened up and she told us to pray with her about someone as regarding healing. That was um, the first one. And the second one we reached out to. Um, there's a particular woman I met. I met her for the first time. Then when I met her, I gave her a word about her husband. Then she told, opened up to me and told me that the husband was sick. Then I went back home. Went back. I told her that I'm going to pray for her. Then went back home, spent time praying. Because that was the first time of meeting them. If it was people that I knew before, I would have, I would have, um, I would have, um, um maybe go home with her and pray with the man but there was no opportunity to do that so i went back to pray and um i called the next day the woman picked and the woman said the husband was okay that was how i was able to meet the um that was how i was able to start a relationship with them and the subsequent um um times i was going there i took my wife along so that was how it was and 
there's a lot of story to that but i don't think i have the time to explain in, into details what was going on and all of that um, um after that i after that i met another person i met another person and we spoke and i followed the person up I, I actually met this person in school in the school and when i met him he's a believer and we spoke and he told me that it's been six months that um, he has prayed. When I heard that, I was like, ooh, hmm, this is strange. Like, I mean, strange. When I say strange, it's because I, I didn't expect people to be in that place. So I told him that I'm going to follow him up and we reach out to the person. And um, we are still connected. We are still constantly following up on him. And that was that person. Um, another person I, I met was someone that the son introduced me to her, introduced me to her. The son told me she was sick and I heard about it and I told her I would like to pray with her. Then I met, when, the day I met her, I met her actually in a church. I met her in a church. Um, she attended the church. I met her in a church and I told her that um, I would love to come and pray for her. That would be the first time I'm meeting her. But I extended uh, to her that I would love to come and pray with her at home. But because I didn't want any issue with the pastor, because um, from what I know about the church, they don't believe in laying on of hands, they don't believe in all those things, and, you know, praying for people. So I was somehow, I didn't want to have the prayer with her there. But she said I should like... I should have the prayer with her. Then started as I was about to pray and I was, as I was about to pray, people were looking at me and then I told her to, we should go somewhere and pray with her. We should go somewhere so that I can pray with her. Then when we met, um, got to the place, I prayed with her and um, I, after that, I gave her words. I gave her some words coming as I was praying, rebuking the pain then she started crying she started crying and she opened up to me about um what was what i was saying and um that was it um so um those are the um few stories i can um um highlight from all of my stories from the time that we started reaching out to people and to now and all of this has made me to be occupied you know because it's not just healing them it's not just um um preaching the gospel to them it's also following them up you know you know in course in visitation in house meeting in i mean in their own house having conversation with them having hours of conversation with them about the gospel of jesus so um so this is the few story that um uh, i can share with this short time <laughs> So um, thank you so much for the opportunity to share this with the brethren. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. My name is Praise. I'm currently in the U.S. Um, I just wanted to share a praise report um, about people getting saved, um, healings going on, and also... Um, people receiving like the gift of the spirit and it's actually quite amazing i have this very close friend and you know all those people that are just always around you um they're like constantly we work together we're in the same environment and conversations started happening and you know when you're conversation started happening and all of a sudden we started talking about Jesus and you know questions started coming in about who Jesus was and who Jesus was and she asked me a very interesting question like who is Jesus to you and I started to explain and the process of explaining um we started talking about the gospel and then she started asking more questions and that was how she became saved by believing <laughs> in the gospel of Christ and how Jesus died and rose from the dead. It was a very, 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 very 
amazing moment for everyone, especially um, for me, for her. And I was really excited about it. Um, one of the best parts of the entire process was that it was based off of a random conversation that we had that turned into questions about, you know, religion. And then all of a sudden, it started going down to Jesus, like who he really was. And the simplicity of how it turned out by the fact that, you know, I just had to take the very, very bold step to initiate that conversation, to be like, hey, like, by the way, who do you think Jesus is? Because you probably have seen like me write about it on my story, or you probably have seen me say, listen to some songs and you've probably have heard me listen to some random things and you know who do you think he is you know and that triggers like a very big heart opening that brought about me sharing who he was and it was a very long conversation and i really appreciate the fact that after that there was clarity inside and she got to see jesus first as her father and someone that really really loves her and that was what brought about a lot of healing to her heart and the experiences that she's been having over a period of time because answering the question of oh why is it that if god is for me why are all these bad things happening like if god really loves us why are children dying you know all those random questions that have a very specific way of showing off the love of god and also like relieving our hearts of a lot of preconceived notions of who the father is and it really gave me joy that you know she came into christ and that brought healing to her in a sense that we could open up our hearts like in the conversation we were able to open up like open up our hearts listen to her and I don't know how to explain this, but in that moment of, you know, us just opening up our hearts, having that conversation, you could just feel that, you could feel that a lot of things that she would have said, she didn't say them anymore. And she just like started to give in one step, one step until, you know, God was able to heal her fully. And that really gave me so much joy especially for the fact of when talking about who Jesus was, we were able to heal depression and anxiety with the understanding of who God was. And that was very beautiful. Another experience that we've had with healing was when we were just having a conversation. Um, we were having a conversation and we started praying and then i just felt that a few people had migraines and we started and i just i told everyone okay let's if you're feeling some kind of pain in your head let me know and a couple of people raised up their hands and i felt so strongly i don't think it was a leading i just thought it was just something very interesting to try that they all prayed for themselves the people that were going through the pain and every single person that prayed for themselves and prayed for other people that were experiencing that pain got healed and it's 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 a very big praise report for me <laughs> because and for everyone there, because they got to see that you have the power to heal. And if you blatantly obey the scriptures and lay hands on the sick, including yourself, you will be healed. And that was one of the things that really made me feel so good and so happy and so joyous. And another experience having of the infilling of the Holy Spirit was when um, I was just, you know, having singing and we are in the room of praising God in songs and I had it in my 
heart to just share a bit of the gospel of Christ. And in the process of sharing that gospel, I felt so strongly that, you know, people were just accepting that truth and having that infilling so strongly of the Holy Spirit. And that is a very, <laughs> and it's still growing every single day with boldness and strength and and by strength i mean like the courage to come into a space where there is like everyone is either they are um they're like maybe they're same-sex married or either they're in a space where they don't believe in god or religion you know coming into that space and having the boldness to walk up to the gate of the person's heart and just start the process of debunking every lie and it takes a while but it's so rewarding in the end and it's so joyous to see that change happen and yeah that's 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 my praise report just the fact that um starting with one person you can cause a very huge chain reaction and just keep it going, keep it going for a long time where everyone comes to see. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Emmanuel and I'm in the US. So I have uh, a few praise reports to share. First one, I met this guy in the mall here uh, and uh, I'll cut the stories out. I got an opportunity to share with him about Jesus Christ and I asked him, I said, do you know about Jesus Christ? And he said, He's uh, up, he was pointing everywhere. And I told him, well, I, I can show you where, where he needs to be. Uh, he needs to be in your heart. He can live in you, it's that simple. And he was very receptive and I shared the love of God with him and right on the spot, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. So I tried to follow up with him the next day, but I could not reach him. Uh, this was about, I want to say about two months ago, but a few days ago, I saw him in the mall and got his uh, number, so I'm going to follow up with him. That's number one. Right within the mall environment as well, I uh, saw a lady that had uh, two crutches walking uh, across the road with two persons on her side supporting her. That was within the last two weeks. and. I was driving by, I stopped and I went over to them and I asked what was wrong with her and they said that she had an accident. So I asked if it was okay to pray with her and she said okay. So I went down, squatted close to her leg and held her leg and prayed for her. Uh, and while I prayed, I quickly got an assurance in my heart that says, it just you just have to lay your hands. So I stood up from there and uh, and went away. That is number two. Uh, third one, within the same mall, there's this guy I know uh, who walks in the mall. And this was about, I want to say maybe four or five months ago. It was right after there was this teaching where there was, had a major emphasis on the witness of the blood of Jesus. And so that was very fresh in my mind at the time. And I saw him. So I stopped by and I said, hi, how are you doing? What's, uh, what's going on with you? And he said he wasn't doing well, that his aunt had a stroke and he was completely paralyzed and he was motionless. Uh, so his eyes were, her eyes, actually her eyes were closed. And uh, so, and I said, well, I can pray for you. Uh, I'll pray with you right now. I'll just need to hold your hand. And next time you see her, just touch her. I'll make contact with her. And so I held his hand and I prayed. Uh, I also, while I was praying, I was ministering to him, telling him about what Jesus has done for him. And it is on that basis that I was praying. So prayed for him and went my way. About, I want to say maybe two to three weeks later on, I got a call from my brethren who works in the mall saying that someone needed, needed me to pray for him in the mall. And so when I got back from work, I came to the mall and they said it was the same person. And uh, 
while she told me she was calling me on the phone she had said the guy said uh i don't know what your friend did the last time he prayed with me inside the mall but right after he prayed i didn't even get to get to my aunt the same day she came up and she opened her eyes and she started moving one side of her body uh so it was on this basis that he was asking that i pray for him again this time around on something else so i got to see him listen to him counseled him and prayed for him and i have followed up with him a, a couple a few times since the since the incident uh i saw him about two weeks ago and i asked how he's doing and he uh he said he was doing well the issue that i prayed with him about and the counsel i gave him and obviously i can i would say that he's he was in a big trouble he really needed some help and he was willing to learn and so right now he's uh he said he's doing a lot better about the issue um i'll share two uh two more and i'll be done um about three weeks ago i met this guy who sits at the corner of my office building and I, I know him he sits there all the time and he asks people for help so in the past i have bought food for him but this time around i got food again and i gave him but while i gave him the food i said do you mind if i pray with you and he said he doesn't mind that he's a believer so i went ahead and prayed with him and while i was praying i had a this focus on his heart right so i went i touched i was touching his heart and i was praying prayed for him and left i saw him again later on sitting in front of my office and i talked to him sat down with him to talk and uh, then he told me uh, the previous night that he had uh people actually he had some some persons attack him uh the previous day uh, the previous night and about i think two of his ribs were broken uh and he had several other issues which i prayed with him about and uh, encouraged him in the lord and shared the love of god with him i haven't seen him since then the last one uh still within my uh, office area i saw this is actually this week about three weeks three days ago i saw this man while i was sitting in my car i saw him on a wheelchair right at the entrance of a grocery store and you know something just said inside of me let's go get this guy to walk so i walked over there and as soon as he saw me he called to me and said can you help me push my wheelchair up the ramp to have him stay around the corner where he i think he does is where he was waiting for somebody or maybe he was asking for help asking people for help so i wheeled him over there and got engaged with him in conversation he told me he had some liver kidney issues and he couldn't walk uh, and i laid my hands on him and uh, prayed prayed for him told him to stand up he could walk quite a ride but he just could not walk many steps so I told him to stand up and make a uh, and walk and he took stood up make made a few steps and sat back down I tried to encourage him to walk more but he was hesitant I told him you know what sit down uh you have been healed you're going to be able to walk and that's uh that was that with him uh I do have a lot more to share but this is uh this is what I have for now thank you